Okay, I have a Soyo model 2286 22 inch uh, LCD monitor and it doesn't work. Uh, what happens when I uh, uh, it, it started like shaking, the screen started shaking every once in a while and kind of popping and I noticed I tapped in the back and it would kind of go black for a second and, and it went on like that for a few days and eventually it just went completely black. Now uh, the power LED goes solid when I apply a video input to it so I'm pretty sure all the video circuitry is working properly and it's just the backlight. So it's what I did to fix this or hopefully we'll fix this, is I removed all the screws. So you notice there's like a number of screws all the way around here. I removed them. And then you have to take a screwdriver and pry along the top to unsnap it along the top because it kind of snaps there. You lift off the cover and I had to unplug. This cable was plugged into this connector. So you had to very careful undo that cable. And this cable was plugged into to this connector. Let me go back in. This cable, actually I could maybe take off the tape and get a little more room, but no point. Uh, you have to be very careful. It's like always one side or the other side. Either I undo these things, and these things wouldn't have been too bad. These are the uh, to the, the inverter, these, these two power things, uh, the backlight. So there's like an inverter here. Can I see this an inverter here? And it has uh, higher voltage cables that go one goes along the top. And then there's another higher voltage cable that goes to all the lighting assembly that goes along the, the bottom. Oh, I guess that's the top and the other one's the bottom. But anyway, uh, there was not, not much different. So I'm, I got this apart. Here's the power supply assembly. And 99% of the time when a monitor doesn't work, it's the power supply. And uh, I've always had bad luck with capacitors. And I don't know if you can see this very well, but uh, like this capacitor right here, this is probably the worst one. You can see it's really got a bulge on it. This one's got a bulge on it. Uh, this one down here has got a bulge on it. This one down here has got a bulge on it. So uh, the rest of them look good, but uh, I'm going to see about replacing the bulgy capacitors. Okay, so now I'm going to take the power supply out of here and replace uh, you know, these two small capacitors and these three no, excuse me, these three larger capacitors, all these uh, purple capacitors, the black capacitors appear to be uh, of a better manufacture. And uh, the first step is, is uh, you can see that there's five screws holding this thing down to the chassis. Uh, the power plug plugs in directly, so we don't have to worry about that. There's a little ground wire, so I took a Phillips head screwdriver, removed that. And basically we've got uh, one, two, three, four connectors to the, to the inverter or to the backlight from the inverter. And then there appears to be some sort of a, a connection right here. And I'll, I'll see how that comes apart there. But uh, one thing I always do, you probably don't need to do this, but this is one thing I always do, is I take like a magic marker and kind of like mark along here to the, uh, so that I, I don't get these two mixed up because it looks like they, and you know what, it'd probably work if I reversed them. But just for fun, I'm gonna put, a, put it along the outside edge, a nice green line along the outside edge, a nice green line, and that way I won't forget what, how to plug them back in. So removing these inverter plugs, if you look, on the top there's a little latch on the top here. So you kind of pry up there, lift the latch up, and, the, and the, then the plug comes out. Like this one comes out, and uh, but, but it's all about removing the latch and then you can get it out. But uh, Boy, these are really tough ones to get out there, but just remember there's a locking latch. Okay, I've got the power supply circuit out here. Let me explain to you how the power supply circuit works. Right here, oh, actually, let me get a little pen here. Right here, we got uh, the power plug comes in here. The, the, the line voltage, whether it's uh, 120 volts or maybe 220 volts, depending upon which country you're in, gets rectified to, to the, the peak value. So uh, if it's 120 volts RMS, it's around uh, 160 volts peak to peak. So this, this bridge rectifier right here will, will re rectify to a DC voltage and there's a bit of filtering with this, this uh, inductor here. And then across this capacitor, there's a 400 volt rated capacitor, will have 160 volts if you live in uh, the United States and, and a lot more if you maybe 300 some odd volts if you uh, live in Europe. Uh, that DC voltage, comes up to the to a uh, some sort of a, a switching transistor, probably a FET of some sort, and that makes a, a square wave. 
and of course there's a, a very small IC chip you, you can kind of see here and that uh, will drive the uh, the switching transistor to create a square wave. It may just be a 50% uh, uh, constant duty cycle or, or they may adjust the duty cycle to change the output voltage. There's probably some feedback going on there to where they adjust that. And uh, we got a transformer here and then we come to the low voltage side. And the low voltage side has uh, two different uh, uh, rectifiers, maybe regulators too. And uh, they seem to just use one chip for everything and a couple of capacitors. And uh, uh, this provides 5 volts and 12 volts. And uh, you know, one thing to notice is like the high voltage section, you kind of see how that, like they have uh, big holes in the circuit board from here to here to separate it. If you look on the back, there's no pieces of, uh, there's no traces going from the high voltage section to anything. It's, the only connection is across here and this chip and the, like uh, this capacitor here from the high voltage to the low voltage. Uh, and, the, and, and then of course, so we have our, our, our inverter circuits and the inverter are these two DC to DC converters. And they take, uh, I'm pretty sure, 12 volts. And uh, th then they uh, step it up to a much higher voltage that, that are used by the CFL backlights. And you can see there's two inverters here and the, the four plugs I, I showed you previously. And, uh, and then, of course, we got our capacitors. So we got two bad capacitors here on the inverter circuit. And these are 180 microfarad 12 volt capacitors. But you know, there's a lot of room here. We can go bigger, we can go larger. If, I'm going to get better, higher quality capacitors, so often they won't be the same physical size. Uh, if you get the really good ones, they're rated for super high temperatures for, you know, because I'm sure these are very cheap ones. They had to save some money. And then over here we have three uh, 1000 microfarad 16 volt capacitors. And um, we'll see here. I think I may have some, uh, some extras of those in my drawer from the last time I repaired something. Uh, and uh, like I said, there's a lot of room here. We can go with uh, taller capacitors. Wider capacitors will have a little problem, but uh, we can go with uh, taller ones. And it's kind of important to, if you're, when you're going to order these things, to maybe get a, a little ruler out there and get a, a rough idea of how large they are. Because I mean, you can, you can, you know, they come in standard sizes, but uh, you don't want to get some big fat short one here because it'll it'll interfere there will be clearance problems. Okay, now we're on the subject of ordering replacements and this is the thing that everybody always gets confused on. It's like which capacitor should I buy? Which capacitor should I buy? And, and the real point is is pretty much any capacitor you buy is going to be better than a bulging one. <laughs> but uh, that being said, you know, let's give you some ideas. Uh, most important thing is size. So I just happen to have some capacitors I bought a little extra of. And you can see these are exact same diameter 10 millimeter and mine are 30 millimeters high and, and then the the part is a bit shorter maybe about 25 uh, millimeters or so so uh, but I can go higher in fact I could go way way higher I mean 30 there's nothing wrong with 30 It'd be nice to uh, but we, we can go bigger but uh, then there's other things to go there's temperature ratings and uh, I've always liked to have a uh, 105 okay I went to the here I am I'm at the digikey Dot com website, digikey.com website, and I'm searching for aluminum electrolytic capacitors. And just for the fun of it, I only did uh, United Chemcom capacitors, although Nichons are, are good too. But but uh, these are, but the United Chemcom is uh, a, certainly a very highly rated brand. So I've searched for United Chemcom, a thousand microfarad, 16 volt, and uh, they're kind of sorted by price. And, uh, and uh, the other spec to look at is like how many hours are rated for. Like this top 71 cent one is rated for 1,000 hours, 105. And that's probably okay. The next one says 6,000. Next one says 7,000. Next one says 8,000. And then uh, we got like 5,000, 4,000. But uh, 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 th these ones down here are kind of nice because uh, you can see that they have a, a lower impedance. So I'm really looking at the, the KZE. The KZE looks like a really nice one. Uh, it has a, a 23 mega ohm impedance, so it's going to be really good for filtering. And it can handle a higher current. If you notice, it can handle 1.8 amps of current, where these ones that go higher will handle less than this top one. Like I say, the 71 cent one, the general purpose one, I think I'm going to pass on that. But any 
any of the, it's only good for a thousand hour, rated for a thousand hours, and I'm sure it lasts a lot longer, it's rated for a thousand hours, and, and it ha they don't list the impedance, and they, it's not rated for very much ripple current, although if you have this capacitor, it'll probably work fine. So I'm thinking, uh, we got the, the three good ones look like the, the, the KZM, the LXZ, and the KZ. So let's look a little bit further here. Okay, this one's 10 millimeters high and 20, or uh, 10 by 20. So this is the exact replacement. This is the exact replacement, lead spacing, five millimeters. I hope, hope you, get, you can see that. But uh, of course the top one has that. This one over here is, is a skinnier one. It's only eight millimeters and it's just a bit taller. So uh, that's, that's our cho choices here. And uh, the general purpose one is really, really short. It's only 16. By 10 but it's not rated as long you see the the bigger they are, the more they're rated the the bigger they are for the same capacitance and uh we're only talking 10 or 15 cents more so the cheap one, cheapest one's 71 cents the most expensive one's 86 cents so i'm going to get three three of the of the united chemcom kze here's the model number i'll i'll get but i i had a lot of choices and i could have okay, here's uh uh, the second set of capacitors I needed are 180 microfarad, 25 volt. And uh, the old ones appeared to be about 8 millimeter by 13 millimeters high, because that's kind of like a standard size so that I saw for some other ones. But uh, they're kind of out of stock on those, or high priced. Uh, I, I, I searched at a couple of them. I looked at Rubicon, I looked at uh, Nichon, and uh, I didn't get a good feeling about th those other ones for this particular capacitor. And this one's uh, something that can ship immediately if they have in stock. It's uh, it's uh, 68 cents, cent, 68 cents. You know, if you're only going to buy uh, one, one or two, which I'm going to only buy. Uh, this is the the LXY series, something I've had good luck with. And uh, like I say, the only difference is is it's 10 millimeters round. And as you can see from looking at these two here, you can see how it's smaller. But this is like an eight millimeter. This is like an eight millimeter, but. There, there's plenty of room for these things to be taller or fatter. So I'm not too worried about that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger and, and, uh, and uh, buy... Uh, okay, the new capacitors arrived in the mail. And one thing I, I, I'm going to do before I get started and want to point out is these are polarized capacitors, which means you, there's a right way to put them in and a wrong way to put them in. And there's a little line right here that's the negative line. And just for the fun of it, just so I don't forget, I'm going to put a little green line on the negative line and a little green line on the negative line and uh, on these right here, a little green line on the negative line. And I, I'm sure that they'll be marked somehow when I take them off. I can't really get this one very well. But uh, anyway, th that'll be enough because... Uh, the circuit boards, will, I'm sure, will have some sort of a designation. But uh, I'm going to be really careful when I take them off because I, I, I couldn't really mark this one right here. And uh, these two smaller capacitors I looked, uh, one's C47, the other one's C26. And then on these three bulging purple capacitors here, what, uh, uh, the bottom of the circuit board has them designated as being PC7, PC6, and PC14. Okay, now we're going to desolder the capacitors. And the way this works is you uh, figure out where the capacitor is. I'm starting on C26, and I have uh, some uh, solder braid, or they call it solder wick. So uh, this is treated copper braid, and I got a, a hot soldering iron here. Let's hope it's hot. And uh, basically, you, you press it on, onto where the leads come out, the through-hole leads, and then it'll suck up the solder. And then... Uh, I suck up all the excess solder with this, although it's, it's actually not getting hot. You know, that's how it goes when you're on camera. You're not going to be able to see it happen. But just pretend I'm sucking this stuff up. And I'll get most of it off, but it won't be all of it. So then is what you'll have to do is you'll grab the capacitor and you'll heat up one lead, and then you'll, you'll pull up on the one lead. And then you, pull, then, then, you let, then you let it solidify. Then you do the next lead. You let that solidify. Okay, that's hot enough now. It's actually getting the solder out. Okay, the capacitor came right out, and I cleaned up the holes so you can see through the holes. And it's just a, a single uh, layer circuit board. These are really easy to work with, really easy to get the solder out of the holes. And you see how there's a cross-hatched area on the top and an open area on the bottom. They even put a little plus sign. 
So, I mean, uh, they got marked really, really well here. So, and you can see where I put the little green line on there, and that shows to the negative line. It's where it's cross-hashed, and where it's opened with the plus is the positive side. And just make sure when you put the new capacitors in there, I don't you know if you can read it. Uh, when there's one of the purple capacitors. It's a Herme capacitor. And it's, you can see that big blob, that's uh, uh, leakage. So there, there's a little bit of bulge on the top, it's a little hard to see, but once you take the capacitor out and you see the big clump of the leakage stuff out of there, you can really tell that's a bad capacitor. Now we'll put the new capacitors in, solder them up, and hopefully six... Okay, we got, got our new capacitors in here, and now I'm just looking around and trying to figure out how to get everything back together. And let's kind of review. We got this cable right here, which kind of plugs right here to the, the circuit board for the, uh, uh, the, the front panel display. For the, you know, the LEDs and maybe a power switch, I think. And then we have this thing right here, which is uh, plugs into to this cable right here. Now, uh, this cable doesn't seem to... Normally, these cables will have like a red stripe on one end. And then if you look here, you see this is numbered from like pin 1 to pin 32. So you, the red stripe would go into pin 1. Of course, this cable doesn't have a red stripe, but... I think if we just do it mechanically, I mean, I think that they have it to where it just goes in flat, to where it doesn't rotate around. So I, I, we'll just do it that way. And then, of course, we got these two plugs here and these two plugs here for the, the backlights. So those are our, our connections. And last time I uh, uh, undid uh, the, these two connections first and then flipped it over into this. And I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try putting it together the obstruction. I'm going I'm to plug this baby in. And, and this cable in, and then, uh, well, you know I'm not. It's not going to fit. I think I'm going to put it back the, the same way I did before. Uh, you know, come to th I'm, I'm saying this out loud here, and I'm realizing what a stupid idea it is, because uh, obviously it's not going to reach. I, I don't know what I'm, I'm thinking about. So I'll, I'm going to put it back just the way I took it. And here we are. Success. It's working. We uh, plugged it in. Everything's working. So, uh, woohoo! job well done. And it only took... Uh, five dollars let's just say seven dollars even with shipping you know i mean uh and it's worth that to have a second monitor all right